And there's some people that can't serve them. But he's giving you the mind and the spirit and the heart to serve him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I think that that is something that we should not take for granted. The mind to want to serve God. Amen. Anybody thank God for a mind to want to be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just take a few moments to worship him and tell him how much we appreciate him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's take a few moments. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the mind. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many have lost it, but God, you allow me to keep it. Thank you. Hallelujah. You love me enough. Hallelujah. My God, I want to serve you. Thank you for the mind. Thank you. Some people that come to church and lose it. But you have it in the midst of struggles, in the midst of battles, in the midst of going through. You lost stuff, but you didn't lose the mind. Don't take that lightly. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together and give God praise. Established, but I do want again, once again, rather honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Certainly, I honor our General Overseer, Apostle C. A. Coward, the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McClellan, the board of bishops, Bishop Sean, Bishop Brooks, and we certainly do give honor to. The district prelate, uh, Bishop Jonathan M. Brookshire. Give honor to the shepherd of this house, ruling Elder Andre Wilson. Certainly honor my friend and brother, District Elder Nixon Phillipson. Uh, it is not in my intentions to be long. Um, I just want to uh, talk to you just for a a few minutes, but I do have a word from the Lord. Amen. John chapter 1 and verse number 12. John 1 and verse 12. says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. Let's pray, God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, use me tonight. God, I'm an empty vessel. Fill me, Lord, with the words you would have me to say. I decrease that you may increase within me. And we will be ever so careful to give you a name. Glory, honor, and praise. Everyone say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you for a few moments 
on the subject the power to become the power to become I believe that it is so important to really understand uh, this thing that we call process uh, in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 the scripture says, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And a lot of times we think that because you have the Holy Ghost, you instantly become a thing. But the truth of the matter is, oftentimes God does not work instantaneously. But God is a God of process. And there's a reason that he takes you through process. There's a reason that he allows you to go through certain things. It's because God wants to make sure that you're able to handle where he's trying to take you to. Amen. In John chapter 1, there was a conversation had. And... The scripture says, but as many as received him. The key to getting access to that power was their reception. Amen. And we have to understand that it is not enough just to come to church. Amen. It's not enough just to show up. And, 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 and now more so than ever, I see such a sense of entitlement. Uh, amen. And uh, what do I mean by that? I, I was having a conversation with a person, and uh, they are rather inconsistent with coming to church. They're inconsistent with just about everything in their life. And... I was having a conversation with them, and they began to express to me how they come to church like they're doing God a service. My love, sir. Let me tell you something. Habit out of everywhere I go to stress the importance of a relationship with God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Because you, uh, oftentimes we come to church, we, we get complacent, we get comfortable, acclimated to each other, and we never truly acquire a relationship with God. In John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, this was not, uh, not just talking about their reception, but God was trying to get them to understand that the greater your relationship the greater the power can be displayed through you. Yes, Amen. 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 So he says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to do what? To become the sons of God. Yes. Says so even to them that believe on his name. And then he says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let me tell you something. God does not just give you the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues. God does not just give you the Holy Ghost for you to quicken. God gives you the Holy Ghost for you to change. Yes. Amen. 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 And that's one thing that we have to understand. And I, I, I really want us to understand that it's good to speak in tongues. It's important. It's imperative. It's necessary that we speak in tongues. But guess what? It's also imperative and important that you're changing. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost ain't just going to dance you. It ain't just going to shout you. It's going to help change you. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. One thing you can see throughout Scripture is when God steps into a thing, he will never leave it the same. It's a dangerous thing. I can go as far as to question a salvation of a person if there's no change in their life. Come on, preacher. That's real. Amen. When Jesus went on the Mount of Transfiguration, he ascended, he took Peter, James, and John with him. The Bible tells us and lets us know that when 
Jesus was through with that experience. He was changed. Scripture tells us that he was glowing. The, the white that was on him, it didn't look like anything that was on the face of the earth. Come on. Why? Because when you are authentically in the glory of God, it's impossible to stay the same. Amen. You can't. I don't care how bad you want to. When you're really in the glory of God, you're going to change. Amen. Tell somebody you got to change. change. Tell them like you mean it. You got to change. Show you this. Show you this. First Samuel chapter 10. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 10. And let's look at verse number 6. It says, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be what? Turn into what? Another man. God say, I'm going to come on you. My Spirit going to rest on you, and you're not going to be able to stay the same. He said, you're going to be turned into another man. Yes, sir. My God, they knew Saul the warrior. <laughs> My God, they knew Saul the battler. They knew Saul the king. But they didn't know Saul the prophesier. <laughs> My God, when God get on you, you can do things that you normally couldn't do. Thank you, Jesus. When God get on you, Hallelujah. You can change some things. Amen. Amen. And we have to be able to tap into that spiritual place. Yes. What is the key? It's not just prayer. Because we can pray and don't receive. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just showing up to church because you can be consistent and don't receive. Yes. The key is your reception. That's why the scripture says, he that hath an ear, do what? Let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. God is calling us out of carnality. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling us to a place of spirituality. It's not enough just to come to church no more. It's not enough. Just to show up. You got to show up now more so than ever looking to receive something. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, the scripture tells you, the preacher, he said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Yes. You ought to be coming to church looking to be changed by what the man of God going to say. Yes. Amen. God said, I'm not going to just keep this power. He told the disciples, he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Amen. He left you something. Amen. My God to change you. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. And verse number 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12 is what I want you to pay attention to. He says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God sent you men to perfect you. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't saying too much. God say, I give you pastors according to my heart. So when you see your leader, you see the heart of God. Yes, sir. Lord, it's tough. You should see the love of God concerning you when compassion is displayed. Through the man of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. The man of God ain't just here to preach to you. 
Amen. Amen. He's not just here to counsel you. Amen. But God has put him in the earth to change you. Amen. It's his job. Yes, sir. And we as people, as churchgoers, us non-pastors, sometimes we make the job hard. Oh, my Lord. My God, the scripture talks about the parable of the sower. <laughs> That sowed seeds and some seeds fell on stony ground. Stony ground. The preacher is the sower. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And when he comes, glory be to God, and minister to you, the word of God is the seed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes you come to church emotional. Sometimes you come to church upset yes, and your heart has been hardened. Yes, and so what God tried to do in your life, he can't do because you're unreceptive. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So what does he say? He said, some seeds fell on stony ground. Some wow. seeds oh, yeah. fell in thorns choked Amen. them. There was a lot of unconducive places mm -hmm. that these seeds fell. The seeds didn't lose power. <clears throat> it was the location that made them unproductive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My yes, God. Yes, the seed don't lose power. That power's inside of the seed no matter where it is. Yes, sir. But it's the location that the seed goes, whether it's going to be productive or not. Yes. Amen. 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 So now, our job as children of God is to make sure that we have a heart of flesh. Amen. Y'all ain't saying too much. Amen. I know I ain't hooping and hollering. That's all right. Yeah, That's we got to make sure that we have a circumcised heart. Amen. Look in the Old Testament. One of the covenants that God made uh, was circumcision. It was a sign to show that God had made a covenant with a particular people. Now, it's no longer required, and we see that in Scripture. It's no longer required that you're circumcised now. Like they did back in the day. Yes, sir. But now he says your heart, heart. has to be circumcised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And some of us are nothing but a bunch of uncircumcised Philistines. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Watch it, Amen. Yes, sir. We come to church, but we don't want to hear what the man of God says. Mm. A lot of us come to church out of tradition. Yeah. Amen. We come to church because grandma went to church. Yes, and it has become such a part of my life to I don't feel complete if I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not about the God. Yes, sir. It's me having that cycle yes. that's been instilled in you. Uh -huh. The scripture tells you, turn up a child, the way you should go, the way you go, you don't do what? Depart. Wow. Depart from it. That's right. So I grew up in the church. Grew up in the church. I mean, Got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost at four years old, started preaching when I was five, and I called myself backsliding. <laughs> went in sin, I told him I went in sin the whole year. I backslid more than once, though. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was in sin, I had such a habit of going to the church to even when I didn't want to go, I went anyway. <laughs> And let me tell you something. Let me help you out. That didn't have nothing to do with the conviction of God. No, it was routine. Mm -hmm. It was routine. All I know is church. And that's a dangerous thing. Yes, it is. Hear me, heed me. It's so dangerous when we sit in church and develop the mannerisms of church people. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes. We develop the habits of church people. Yes, sir. We develop the conversation of church people, but we don't have the relationship. That's right. Amen. Amen. With God. That's real. Yes, sir. The people have a place. Yes, sir. 
But God has a plan. And Jesus told the disciples, he said, render the Caesar. What's due to Caesar? But he says, render to God. What's due to God? It's not enough just to have a relationship with people. Y'all ain't saying too much. Yes, sir. Amen. You've got to have a relationship with God. Yes. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid that what we are building is religious people. Relationship has to be important. Hallelujah. To the point where you're willing to hurt people's feelings. Yes, sir. And cut people off if you got to. Yes, sir. Yeah. But a lot of us are afraid to cut stuff off. Mm -hmm. Cut people off. You got to circumcise Amen. your heart. Oh, sir. Your heart with the whole agenda to tear down what yes, God has said to you. Yes, sir. That's why you got to hide it. And what David was really talking about was his level of value to what God said. Yes, sir. My God, what God said. Is more important than what your mouth say. Amen. Yes. Amen. Y'all ain't helping me tonight. Amen. Amen. What God says is more important than what your daddy says. Yes. Amen. My God, they were calling for Jesus, and Jesus said, Who is my mother? Yes, Who is it? Who is she? When they asked all these questions, and his conclusion was, I'm going to tell you who my mama is. Yes, I'm going to tell you who my family is. Amen. He said, blood don't make you family. Yes, he said, the will make you family. Amen. That's it, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. My Lord. He said, those that do the will of the Lord. Yes, sir. My God. Hallelujah. You can't be so caught up in blood type. Oh, God. Oh, sir. My yeah. God. Because they came from the same woman. Don't make them a brother. Lord, y'all hear me tonight. My God, when you saved, you got to act like you saved. Amen. When you saved, the scripture tells you to come out from amongst Amen. them yes, sir. and be yourself. Can I tell you sometimes them is family. Yes, it is. Y'all hear me tonight. Amen. Sometimes them is people that you didn't expect to cut off. Mm -hmm. And hear me, hear me, I'm speaking this in love. I'm not implying that you go home and say, Mama, you ain't saved. I ain't dealing with you no more. That ain't what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is that your spirituality has to be prioritized over your yes, heart. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. John. He said, but as many as you think that is this, but it's not. It's this. The same way Jesus says, I'm a mediator between God and you. When Jesus ascended, that mediator position wasn't dissolved. He left the man of God. Yes, sir. He's a mediator between you and God. And can I tell you something? You're not going to hear more from God in prayer than you do from the man of God. Mm. Amen. You're not a pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God ain't going to talk to you more than he talked to your leader. Amen. 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 When God got something to say to you, all times, it's going to come through the pulpit. Amen. It's going to come through the counseling. Yes, yes it is. As God's mouthpiece, the scripture asks the question, how can they hear without, without a preacher? preacher? Yes, I can't preach. Yes, when you got a sick man, yes, sir. he's able to access a level in God that an unsent man can't. Yes. Hallelujah. When you got a sick man, He's able to tap into a place in the spirit on behalf of you yes, sir. Yes, sir. that an unsaid man came. Amen. We got to understand 
that it's not just our level of reception in prayer. It's our level of reception to the word. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? Sometimes the word going to cut you. Yes, it is. Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes the word going to chop you. Amen. Why is he doing that? Because God says that he's coming back for a church without a what? Stop. Coming back for a perfect church. The church is not a building. The church is a people. Amen. Yes, sir. And God is a general surgeon. Help us. And he'll take the preacher's mouth and I'll cut you up to make sure that you're ready when he appears. Yes, sir. Amen. And see. When you allow religion to take precedence in your life, you won't find value in what the man of God is saying. That's true. That's true. You ought to be thankful yes, Lord. that you got somebody that hears from God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's not preaching his feelings, but he's preaching the unadulterated word of God so that you can be benefited. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sure there was moments that he wanted to preach blessings. But God didn't give him a blessing message. Amen. 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 I'm sure that he wanted to be encouraging in certain moments. But God said, no, come and be. You have to be receptive of all of these things. That's where you're going to get your power yes, to become sons of Thank God. Thank you, Lord. man. That's it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Second Timothy chapter three. I'm about done, y'all. Take your time. Second Timothy chapter three, and. Verse number 16. Mr. Holly, if you will, read that for me. All scripture uh -huh. is given by inspiration of God. Uh -huh. And is profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, yes. for correction, uh -huh. for instruction in righteousness. The words, the words that the man of God looked at. What do you understand that? What we read is not the word of God. My Lord. It's the scripture. These are scriptures. Mm -hmm. But it takes a man of God mm -hmm. to look at some paper yes. and get a word out of it. Yes. Amen. He'll take a piece of paper and find God in it. Yes. Yes. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. And he said, I'm going to give you this. I'm giving you these scriptures. So that you can teach them how to have a relationship. What does he say? Read that again. All scripture uh -huh. is given by inspiration of God. Yes. And is profitable for it's doctrine. Profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction in uh, righteousness. Yes. So look, isn't it? He said, these scriptures. I've given to you for a belief system. You're going to see God in the text when you got a man of God. Yes, sir. And he said, not only for that, he said, but I've given you these scriptures for reproof. Amen. I've given them to you for rebuke. Mm -hmm. yes. He said, everything I say ain't going to feel good. No. It may come a season where God got more bad things to say than you do good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, this is the thing. I'm going to tell you this. Listen yes, to me. Listen to me good. God shows his love mm -hmm. when he corrects you. Yes, he says he chasteneth whom he loveth. Yes, Amen. A toxic parent don't let a child do what they want to do. But when you love your child, I'm going to correct you because I don't want you to go to hell. Amen. It's the preacher's job to straighten you up. 
Yes, sir. And tell you to fly right or you going to hell. Amen. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. 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 And he said, I'm not just going to let him speak these words alone. He said, I'm going to give him scripture to back up you getting the brakes beat off of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna correct you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Lord. Why am I correcting you? Because I want you to be better. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want you to change. Thank you, Jesus. And what does that boil down to? Your reception. Amen. You've got to be able to receive what God is saying in this season. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And can I tell you something? And people don't really pay attention to this. Seasons expire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, they do. Seasons change. Yeah. Just like you've got winter, you've got spring, you've got fall, you've got summer. All of those are seasons. You have a start to it and an end to it. Amen. Let me tell you something. And a lot of us, I believe, are lacking discernment. Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to reside in seasons that have expired. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Wow. Stop putting on winter clothes when it's summertime. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop putting on shorts and white beaters when it's wintertime. <laughs> Not white beaters. Not white beaters. You dress for the season. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm dressing for my season. I'm dressing for my season. Like you believe it, I'm dressing for my season. I'm dressing for my season. My God, and it may look like I'm jacked up now. But my God, I got reception. So God ain't through with me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. God tells us in his word, go to Philippians. I'm not through, I promise you. Philippians chapter 1. Verse number six. Being confident of this very thing, uh -huh. that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it yes. until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. When you got reception, you ought to have some confidence. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? When you hear God, you ought to be confident that when he tells you a thing, it's going to happen. Tell somebody it's going to happen for me. Tell them I'm becoming. Tell them like you mean it. I'm becoming. Now put that thing in the atmosphere and tell them I'm becoming. Glory be to God. God said, I'm not done with you. He says, I'm not going to leave you the same way you came in. Thank you. My God, he told the disciples before he ascended back to heaven, he said, it's expedient that I go. He said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Yes, sir. He said, behold, I'm going to send the comforter. He said, I'm going to send him in my name. God said, I done gave you what you need. My God, in order to become that product I'm trying to make you. Yes, yes sir. Anybody believe that tonight? Hallelujah. 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 The scripture tells us that the Holy Ghost is going to lead and guide us in all truth. Yes, My God, he says that the Holy Ghost ain't just going to speak through you. The Holy Ghost going to speak to you and tell you where to go. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He said, I gave it to you. My God, the Holy Ghost is a global positioning system. Woo, glory be to God. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is like a magnet. Hallelujah. And that magnet that's inside of you is trying to connect with another magnet. Amen. So what does he say? He said it's going to lead you and guide you. What is it going to guide you to? True. God is true. He said, I put God in you. Glory be to God to get God to you. That's why he says, draw me out of me. Yeah, I'm going to draw me out of you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Tell somebody I'm becoming. Tell them, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Oh, you didn't say that like you in process. Tell them, don't trip. Hallelujah. He ain't through with me yet. God's still working on me. God's still putting me together. And then I was reminded of 
what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said that we are as clay and God is the potter. And then God said, I'm not going to discard you because the world discards you. He says, I want you to receive what I have for you. And when you are receptive, my God, I've given you power to become sons of God. And then anybody want to be a son of God? I'm talking to the sisters in here too. The tread on serpents, glory be to God. I didn't just give you power to drink poison. I didn't just give you power to speak in other tongues. I didn't just give you power for you to lay hands on the sick and they recover. He said, but when I gave you me, I gave you power to change. What am I changing? Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Paul. Amen. In Romans chapter. Verse number one, he says, Therefore, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let me tell you what got to change. You've got to change. My God, in verse number two, he says, And be not to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind why because you're going to have to prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God my God God says I don't just want you to speak in tongues but my God I'm trying to get a product out of you glory be to God glory be to God you get you get baptized and the Bible tells you that as many as are baptized have put on Christ glory be to God but when you get the Holy Ghost you look like it glory be to God and too many people have put him on but they don't look like it God y'all ain't helping me in here now I got the old songwriter said that I want to be just like him I don't just want to prophesy. I don't just want to hoop and holler. I want to be like Jesus. Anybody want to be like him? Put your hands together and give God a praise. Tell somebody. Tell them I want to be like him. Uh, all respect due to my apostle. But he don't want me to be like him. All respect due to the presiding bishop.
you. My God to speak in tongues. I don't just want you to. My God to lay hands on the sick. He said, because you got to be careful. Because in that day, they're going to cry, Lord, Lord. Did I not cast out pillars? Did I not prophesy? And he's going to say, depart from me. You work of iniquity. God says, I'm not coming back for anything less than myself. Wow. So he said, when I show up, you're going to have to be thinking like me. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't saying too much. Yeah, you. You're going to have to talk like me. Yep. Heaven. You're going to have to walk like me. Walk. Yes, sir. You're going to have to be like me. Amen. Thank you. The scripture says, what do a prophet of man gain the whole world and lose his soul? What has happened is we brought the ideologies of the world into the church. Let me tell you something. The world don't dictate and hear what success is. Amen. Some of us will never be millionaires. But that don't make me unsuccessful. Amen. I'm going to tell you what true success is. When you take your last breath. That's it. That's it. And you ain't went to hell, but you sleep. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. That ain't something you want to hear. You want to hear a check coming in the mail and you're going to be a millionaire before you leave out here. Some of you are going to leave out broke. Uh -oh. Mm. Uh -oh. so. The Bible says the poor won't always be among us. Amen. <laughs> Some of us ain't gonna leave rich. Amen. That's all right. That's real. But it don't mean I left unsuccessful. Amen. Amen. Wow. 
Wow. Success is knowing that your soul is secure. That's it. I may not be receptive of social security. But my God, I'm receptive of soul security. Yes, sir. Why? Because I stopped focusing on my income. Watch it. And start paying attention to my outcome. Yes, my Lord. Dog sir. I know. Don't get me wrong. You need money. The Bible tells you money answers all. Yes, and you know, deep folk, broke folk. Matter of fact, broke folk like the quote it. <laughs> the love of money. <laughs> Root of all these limitations, I don't love money. I love what money buy me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man. Amen. Amen. But that's not more important than my salvation. God is more important than every dollar I get. Amen. Every car I drive, every house I own. He's more important than all of that. Amen. He has to be your priority in this season. Let me tell you what's going on in this season. Hit me good. The tails and the wheat yes, that growing together. Wow. But there's going to come a moment yes, sir. where God's going to separate That's the it, wheat from the tail. He's going to separate the sheep and the goat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You better make sure you ain't no tail. You better make sure you ain't no goat. Especially when God is giving you the tools you need to be saved. God didn't leave us with nothing. I say I love you so much. I'm going to wrap myself in flesh. I'm going to come and die. Three days later, I'm going to get back up. He said, I'm going to ascend back to heaven, but I'm going to send another portion, a manifestation of myself back down. Yes, God said, I love you so much, I can't even leave you by yourself. Yes, Why well, the angels got judged said, what is man that you mindful of? He said, they dirty, they inconsistent, they unfaithful. But God said, they got a song. They can sing that you can sing. Mm. I've been redeemed That's it, and washed yeah. by the blood of the Lamb. Gives you an advantage. Why? There's a level of gratefulness that you can have and angels can never understand. That's it, sir. That's why they're jealous. I got something they ain't got. Hallelujah. Church, we have to get more spiritual. Dangerous days are ahead. And you've got to be spiritually in a place to handle what's to come. You done heard it before. This country ain't getting better. It ain't gonna never get better again. Yeah. Matter of fact, the books say when they cry peace and safety, it's gonna be sudden destruction. Sudden. You gotta pay attention to the times we're in. That's it, sir. You've been hearing it before, but I'm telling you right now that we ain't never been this close to the rapture. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. You can see the Bible unfolding right in your face. What yes. them that are used in Zion? Don't relax. Don't get comfortable. My God, your spirit got to be at high alert. Thank you, Lord. Something is coming. My God. Something is coming. And if it could, it would deceive the very elect of God. The devil is out. Jesus, talking to Peter, said, Peter, the devil desired to have you and to sift you as wheat. He said, but I pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. That your faith fail you not. 
Hallelujah. It's not time to be tiptoeing with the devil. In the night. We've got to become serious about God. He's got to be a priority. He's more important than your career. That's it, sir. He's more important than your your degree. Got to get sincere about God. I'm afraid that some of us are gonna miss him. My God. Because we're gonna be caught up doing church and not doing God. A lot of us crave the church, but we don't crave the God of the church. You want results without relationship. He's not doing that. If you want results in your life, that's it, sir. You need a relationship. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands to the Father. Right where y'all want you to pray just for a few. Father, help us. Help us to change. Yes, Hallelujah. God, help us to be receptive of what you're saying to us. God, cultivate our ears. My God, that we may hear you more clearly. God, help us, God, to keep our hearts malleable. Help our hearts not to get hardened. Come on, pray just for a few minutes. God, we need you. God, we're not ready for your appearance. We're not ready for your appearance. Help us, Father, to be ready when you appear. Change us. Burn up those impurities that are in us. God, make us like you. Help us to live like you called us to live. Help us to be sanctified. Help us to be holy. Help us to become like you want us to be. Father, we can't do it without you. Come on, pray just for a few minutes. Come on, we need his help. We need his help tonight. Hallelujah! Oh, my sin. Oh, my man, Kosha. He come up and see you, my. Father, we need you. Some of us are too lax, Lord. My God, help us, Jesus, to put our spirits back on alert. Help us, Father. Some of us are too carnal. Help us to be more spiritual that we can handle the deep things in you. God, we need you. God, help us to come out of religion and step into relationship. Father, we want to know you. We want to know you. We want to know you. And the power of your resurrection. And the fellowship of your suffering. God, we want to know you. We want to be ready when you come. Help us to be serious. Help us not to be so lax. Jesus tonight. Do it for these your people. Oh my gosh, Lord, let tonight be different. Let tonight be supernatural. God, let us not leave the same. Let us leave change in our minds, change in our hearts, change in our spirits. God, we want to make heaven. We want to see you. We want to enter into the kingdom. Father, help us. Father, help us. God, if you don't help us, we are helpless. 
Father, we can't live this life without you. Touch us, Lord. Touch these, your people. Give them a supernatural touch tonight. Touch that inward man. Touch the hearts of your people. Touch the minds of your people. Give us urgency to seek you again. God, renew our hunger. Renew our drive. Renew our thirst to chase after you. Father, we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. We'll give you, we'll give you praise. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. 